So what do you do when it all falls apart and the wheels come off? So during the pre-buy, we noticed a crack in the head of another cylinder. Except this was post-exhaust, so I didn't notice any power reduction, so I don't know how long that had been going on. So making a decision driven by safety and in the interest of the new owner, I replaced the cylinder. I just went ahead and did that. And when we were putting the new cylinder on, we took a look at the cam lobe, and this is what we found. A pitted cam lobe that was in really, really bad shape. Maybe the engine had about 25 hours of life left in it. So at about 1850 hours and 30 years, it's just dead. And sometimes this just happens. So obviously this throws a whole bunch of moving parts in the air. And here's the one thing that you need to keep in mind when things go sideways like this or when something like this happens. You must let safety drive all your decisions. So hear me out on this one. In the interest of safety and the new buyer, it was time to scrap the deal. This turned a cool little airplane for right now into a fancy piece of aluminum with wings that needs a parking space. The engine's just dead. So this may seem like the worst thing that can happen, but I want to ask you a question. Is it? I mean, is this really the worst thing that can happen? Had the new cylinder been installed without looking at the cam, the engine could have failed on the way up to the new buyer, and that was all the way up in St. Louis. So I and my friend would have potentially been stuck somewhere, possibly in a cornfield or on a highway with a dead engine in the middle of nowhere with no resources, or worse, the buyer could have accepted the plane and then could have had an engine failure just having bought a new airplane. And this could have been a lot worse. The engine could have failed in mid-flight. Anything could have happened. So right now, my decision was this plane was not leaving the ground, period. So let me tell you something. This isn't the worst thing that can happen. And I'll tell you why. Number one, no one lost any money. As a buyer, you have to look at a pre-buy inspection as an investment in discovering any future possible problems you may have. The $800 or so you spend on a pre-buy may save you a lot of money in the future. And in this case, it did. It saved the buyer $74,500 and a lot of delays and a lot of headaches. And it was money well spent. We both agree with that. And everyone knows the buyer will find a better airplane. So now the question is, how does this affect me? Well, not really that bad. Before I was gonna sell 2214 Yankee, I was going to repower it to an IO360, put a new interior in it, and put an engine monitor in it. I already have the budget for that. So I was gonna apply that budget toward a new airplane once I sold it. So all I have to do is go back to the original plan and I'll have an awesome airplane. I'm gonna upgrade to an I360, and I'm gonna put an engine monitor in it as well as a new interior. I do wanna to upgrade to a different type of airplane, but I'm gonna hold off for a year or so. It's just a wise financial decision. So yes, now I'm gonna repower and I'm gonna put an engine monitor in it and I'm gonna put a new interior in it and next year I'll upgrade to a new plane. So all being said, all in all, there's one thing I wanna get across to you. You have to keep a positive attitude in life for one simple reason. The alternative sucks. So right now, expect a few videos. I'm getting a new engine and all that's involved in getting a new engine. And if you are over 50, you know what to do. And I've got a lot of work in front of me.